helps you? Stop it, Lou. Every week it's the same thing with the thing right in front of my kisser. Oh, well, you've got injured. And that reminds me why that girl does that. That that reminds me of something. What? Was that really something you were fixing up on a telephone with Hillary about a date or something? That's none of your business. Well, I think it is, because every time I see some girls on top of me right away, you say you shouldn't do this, and you always bore me out. Uh, well, you, you're crazy about girls. That's all you talk about is girls, girls, girls. With me, it's different. I like friendship. Boys and girls, to me, they're good friends. Yeah. That's all. They're both the same to me. They're both the same. Sure. Boys and girls are both the same to you. Sure. What's the matter? Where did you try getting in the YWCA? Are you in for a surprise? <laughs> Stop following me, please. I'm going to take Hillary out tonight. Oh, no. We're going what to... do you mean you're going to take Hillary out? I'm taking Hillary at the band concert tonight. Yeah, take... Now, not just a minute. Listen, this is man talk. Get over this. <laughs> I'm taking Hillary out. Tonight. What do you mean you're taking her out? I'm taking her out. I'm the oh, one she's really crazy about. Now, who are you pushing? I on? told you this is nothing for a young boy to listen to. <laughs> I've got a uniform on. Don't think you're running this room. I now. can take this uniform off. I can take it off. Wait, I'll tell you what I'll do with you. What will you do with me? Let Harry decide on it. Oh, All right. right. We'll go over to the door there. You've got a gun. I'm moving. <laughs> Sit down. I've got a boy to hear. No, you shouldn't be listening. We'll go over to the other. door and we'll have an argument. You say you'll take her out, I'll say I'll take her out. You say you'll take her out, I'll say I'll take her out. What are you doing, Omi? Never mind. Then you fire two shots on the floor. Well, we'll fall down. She'll think we're dead. Now she'll come to the one that she likes. I'll prove to you that she likes me. Well, I don't like it, but I'll do it. Come Go on. ahead. What do you mean? I'm taking Hillary out tonight. Oh, you're crazy. I'm taking Hillary out I'm, tonight. I'm taking Hillary out because she likes me. She likes me better than she likes you. She I'm likes taking her out. me. Now, don't give me that lip. Listen, why should she go out with you? Now, don't give me any of that. Don't you talk to me like that. Don't you talk to me like that, Abbott. Now, I've had enough. Listen, I've got a gun, too. Don't worry. I've got a gun, too. Well, I've got a gun. All right, that does it. Take that. <laughs> All right, then take that. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, my darling, what kind of stuff is that? Were you a little lower stuff, uh, man? Wait. I mean, I wasn't even playing that game. I mean, she, she counted me in. This is a great idea of yours. I knew you weren't dead. I heard the whole plot through the door. Here, here. I heard a couple of shots. Mike, Mike, were you cleaning your gun again? Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, so it was you, huh? <laughs> Give me that gun. This is. Hillary, you got some coffee? Yes, Mike. Could I have a cup? Surely. <laughs> what are you, an imbecile? He, he shouldn't have taken that money from you. Now, we know that Mike fired those shots, and he charges you for the holes in his carpet. Well, this time, he won't get away with it. Now, here's what you're going to do. You got another idea? I've got a wonderful idea this time. Here I go. What do you... Go where? I always go someplace when you got an idea. Don't oh, worry. This one, I mean, at least. If you go to jail... It'll... Listen, this is one time I'll work hard with you, boy. I'll work I'll get you out if it takes me 20 years. Throw a rock up there and break that window. Now get this idea. You want me to throw a rock up there and break the break window? Break the window. When he comes out, just insult him. Say anything that you want to him. Are you out of your mind? Wait a minute. I'll be down here. I'll take a picture of him abusing you, beating you up. Then we'll take him to court and we'll sue him for everything he's got. We may take the whole rooming house away from him. How do you like that idea? That's brains. You want me to take a rock, throw it through the window? Throw it through the window. And then when Mr. Field comes out, he says, who did it? I'm brazen, I say. I did that's, it with my own little dog. That's the idea, but make him insult you. Yeah, then he comes and he insults me, and I insult him, and then and he... That's right, make him beat you up. No matter how... You're going to take a picture. I'll take the picture of him, and we'll take it to court, brother. We'll get plenty out of that's him. That's the best idea you ever had. Well, there you are, you see. Uh, go ahead, there you'll find one around there. Got one? Go ahead. Right here. Go ahead, go ahead I'll get it. I'll break that window. Come on up and insult so. Hey, Mr. Field! Who threw that rock through my window? I threw that rock, sir! <laughs> oh, you did, huh? Yeah, what am I going to do about it, Baldy? Baldy? Baldy, what's wrong with my head? Hey, Mr. Field. Yes? Do you sleep with that head on a pillow? I certainly do. How do you keep it from sliding off? <laughs> what's the matter, Smarty? Didn't you ever see anything like this before? Something like this here. I saw something like that once before in a, in a barn under an old hen. <laughs> Let me tell you something. My boy, let that be a lesson to you. And 
And if you don't pay for that window, I'm going to give you a punch in the nose! Get it? Get what? You just give you one little slap. That don't mean anything in court. That wouldn't stand up with a jury. That wouldn't stand up with a judge. He'd laugh at it. What, are you going to take a man's building away from him just from a little slap? And sell him! I want to get a good beating up here. Come on. Hey, you bald-headed janitor! That's right. You call me a janitor? You heard what I called you? you... <laughs> I've seen better-looking pans under the icebox. <laughs> no, I don't happen to be a janitor. I'm the proprietor of this boarding house. Oh, come on! I'm a successful man. I know. <laughs> You're always coming out on top. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, you see this fist? Yes, How do you like that, huh? <laughs> you start with me, will you? You idiot. How's that one? No good. Why don't you take it off him? Keep him selling him. Don't let him do the talking. He's doing all the talking. You're Look, just let me, let me take the picture. You insult him. Wait a minute. You're the one that's got to sue him. Let the guys belt me around. Take the picture, will you? I'm not insulting him enough. Get say ready. something real mean. Get ready. Well, say something mean to him. Hey, you, you curly-headed, bald-headed, if you had hair, if you had hair, you curly-headed, give me insults. I would not, <laughs> if I had hair, I'm huh? nothing but a janitor. One more remark from you and I'll hit you so hard you'll have to unbutton your shoes every time you blow your nose. <laughs> Just here. Did you take the picture? He was here. He just kicked me all over the sidewalk. Why don't you tell me those things? I didn't see it. Well, where were you? I mean, I was standing right here. How can I take a picture if I don't see it? Now, in him. Come on. Come on, we'll fix him. He's not going to get away from me. He can't. Hey, yo! Come here! We won't go with him, boy. Ah, that stuff is right in here. I... Why didn't you remind me to put film in here? You're a fine... There it is right there, all the time. No film in the camera. There he is. There he is. That's the man who broke my window. Lock him up. <laughs> so you've been breaking windows, huh? This is just what I've been waiting for. All right, come on. Come with me. Uh, what's happening here, Mike? Oh, this little miscreant. It's been disturbing the peace. I'm going to run him in. Ah, oh, just a moment, Mike. Pardon me, but uh, are you two boys registered voters? All right, Councilman, you know that. We've always voted for you. We vote and vote and vote for you, and then, then, then we will vote some more for you. Uh -huh. Mike, I'm surprised at you. Picking on two good citizens, voters, just because they're making a little bit of noise. <laughs> Have a cigar, boy. Thank you, sir. And don't forget to vote right in the election next month. Thank you, Councilman. <laughs> and remember, Mike, as Councilman of this district, I am practically your boss. So keep off of these good citizens. Huh. Good day, my constituents. Good day, Councilor. All right, politics. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know, that gives me an idea, my friend. Gives you an idea? Uh-huh. Now, wait a minute, buddy, Abby. No more ideas. Oh, wait a minute, Louis. You're not going to take any more pictures. Oh, nothing like that. You're going to run for office. You're going to become a councilman. I'm going to run for office now. I don't know the first thing about it. You don't? What do you have to know? There's only three things you do to become a councilman. Well, what, what I gotta do? Number one, you give out cigars. Yeah. Number two, you make speeches. Number three, you kiss the babies. Hey, that's, I, I, I can do that. Uh, and if you're elected, you're Mike's boss. You mean I would be Mike's boss? Over Mike the cop. What does that make Mike the cop? Nothing. That's me, boss over nothing. No, no. no.
I'm going to tell you something, Abbott. Because I, I don't like this beating around and I'm getting all the time from you. And, then, and you're always bowling me out and the landlord's bowling me out, Mike the cop, and sometimes even Hillary gives me a, a harsh word. I don't, I don't have to take it. That's back. because you're stupid, Lou. I can't help it if I'm stupid, Abbott, because I come from a small town and a poor family. What has that got to do with it? Abraham Lincoln was born in a log cabin. And when he was your age, he wrote a book. And when he was your age, he was president. Sure. <laughs> and seven years ago, our forefathers brought upon this continent a new nation. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Abraham Lincoln said that. Abraham Lincoln said this? Certainly. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. This material is original. I wrote this uh, material stop myself. Stop it. Every little schoolboy knows that. How do you like that? Once you get something original, somebody else has got to steal it. What are you talking about? Where do I get my hands on Lincoln? Lincoln is dead. Dead. Yes. See what I mean? See what? One day I pass up without reading the papers and you don't know what's going on. Oh, stop that. Why don't you write something original? If you're going to steal, steal something like the, uh, like the, the Declaration of Independence. Now, there's something. You know, if you're going to steal something, of course, you know what the Declaration of Independence is. Yeah, that's a divorce. That's a... <laughs> Certainly not. You mean that... Don't you... Don't you know where the Declaration of Independence was signed? Sure I do. Yes, where? On the bottom line. Yes. <laughs> Why don't you be original? Think of an idea of some kind. Now, number one, uh, you've got to know what to say to a woman if you happen to meet her in the park, wheeling her little baby in a baby buggy. But I'll rehearse you in that, see? Will? Yeah. Where are we going to get the mother and the baby car? Well, we've made all those arrangements. I, I made arrangements with Mrs. Fields for the baby buggy. You did? Yes. Now, you wait right here. So, take it easy. Ladies and gentlemen, something I've got to tell you. There's some nasty propaganda going around this town. People are starting to call me the brain. I want you to believe me, folks. There's nothing in it. There we are. Now, we're all set for the rehearsal. Now, uh, uh, pretend this is the park. You're standing in the park, and I'm taking the baby out for a little airing. Uh, I'm the mother. This I'll never get over. Get, get over what? Well, we did for so long, I didn't know you had a baby. Listen, we're just pretending. Oh, we're pretending. Pretend. Let's make leave. You want to get in the office, don't you? Yeah. Well, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in the office. I'm, the, I'm in the park now. You're in the park now, and I'm just taking the baby You're out. the baby's mother. I'm the baby's mother. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Abbott. How do you do, Mr. Costello? I can't get over him having a baby. Will you? Will you <laughs> Listen, if you can't say anything nice, shut up. All right, let's try it again. Now, get with it. OK. Come on, use your brains a little bit here. I'm doing this for your benefit, you know. Hello, Mrs. Abbott. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Costello? My, but you're pretty. You really think I'm pretty? And then again, you're ugly, too. I'm ugly. Uh, in between. You're pretty ugly. <laughs> pretty ugly. Come over here. Come over here. Look, Lou, please. I'm trying to rehearse you. I want you to be nice to these women to get their votes. You want me to say something? Say something real nice. Compliment me. You know what I mean. OK. Hello, Mrs. Abbott. How do you do, Mr. Castle? Why, but you look charming this morning, strolling through the park with your beautiful baby. Oh, it's a marvelous little child. It's uh, a nice baby. Uh, would you like to see the little infant? Yes, I would. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, darling, uh, this is, uh, this is Louie. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Uh, what? Take back what I said before about you not being a mother. Say, why, you see. You could be a mother. Huh? Yeah, sure you could. I could. That baby looks just like you. <laughs> Come over here. Darling, what do you think of uh, Mr. Costello running for office? <laughs> Don't forget, give out plenty of cigars and kiss all the babies. We need votes. No, no, no. Excuse me, sir. Have a cigar. Have a cigar. Ah, uh, boy. And I want you to vote for me as councilman of your whole neighborhood here. Because if, I, if you vote for me as councilman, I am going to give you everything that you folks want around here. Hey, come here, there. Have a cigar. Vote for Lou Costello. This is all right, kid. You're doing all right. Just get some more votes. How do you do? How do you think my chances are? Not very good. My husband's walking right behind me. What kind of fun am I getting around here? Easy. 
a very close friend, buddy. How do you do? I guess you know who I am. Yes, of course. Well, I'd know you anywhere. Well, you're Figaro Cacciatore, the great Italian opera singer. I'm the great Italian opera. What? You mean opera singer? <laughs> Have a cigar. What does it make? Oh, I think about you every night. This kid's lost. Look at those big brown eyes and those flashy clothes. Look, lady, I think you got me mixed up. Oh, I'm... how could I possibly be mixed up? I'm, 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 I want you to vote for me for I, Casselman. I want you to know that every day I think about you when I work and when I eat and at night when I dream. Now, well, wait a minute. Who lady. do you think I dream about? I don't know who. I dream about you. About me? Who am yes, I? Yes, I just want to hold you tight. Now, wait a minute, lady. Look. my lips I, I got yours. Look, lady. Four score and seven years old. Sing a high C. Are you kidding? Sing. I can't sing a note. <laughs> He's a man that is not connected with any particular party. Is he a Republican? No. Is he a Democrat? No. He is a combination of a Republican and a Democrat. He sure is. He eats like an elephant and thinks like a jackass. <laughs> Happy friends, I now give you your next councilman, Mr. Louis Costello. support me as your city councilman and I promise you ladies and gentlemen that I will do away with taxes there will be no taxes no gambling no lather no brush no love until my baby comes home again I say ladies and gentlemen you may be thinking, as to what Mr. Abbott said, when I am not either, I could have said either, <laughs> that I am not either or either a Republican or a Democrat. I am in the middle. That is commonly known as the fusion party. I have done away with that too. I stand behind my party. Confusion. <laughs> Confusion party. That's what you think. I... Peanuts, a pop of corn, a chocolate covered a dumbbell. I beg your pardon, sir. We're up here. Just to play the dumbbell. Now, wait a minute, Master Bachigalo. Bachigalo, please. Uh, this is your next councilman. Respect. I want you to have a little respect for me. I'm getting a little enough from you lately. Go on with us, please. If I'm the next councilman, I'll see that you don't get no permit. Maybe no, 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 don't no, do no, what's no, right. No. Be nice. I've got to show my authority. All right, go ahead. Go on with the speech. Ladies and gentlemen, and also the voters. You can plainly see that I am nuts. nuts. <laughs> I told you to keep quiet. I won't tell you again. Get off the ground. Go ahead, Mr. May I slug him with a small chair? <laughs> Certainly not. I'm going to vote for you. My wife, I'm a matter for 20 years. Is she going to vote for you, too? My 18 kids, are they going to vote for you, too? You married 20 years and you've got 18 kids? <laughs> sure. The stalker gave me two years off. Good behavior. <laughs> Will you get on your way, please? I'm trying to make a speech here. Mr. Costello, please, I have some great news for the audience. While gazing around here, I happen to spy a little lady. When I say a little lady, she is a lady. Who was Mr. Costello's school teacher when he was in the fourth grade of public school. Isn't that wonderful? Ah, yes, Miss Buckalock. I introduce Miss Bacalock to the folks. Hello, voters. I wish to have you know Miss Bacalock, my fourth grade school teacher. Miss Bacalock, it's nice to have you at this meeting here. Thank you. You remember when I was in the fourth grade? You remember me, don't you? No, I don't. Don't you remember the little boy that always had his hand up? Oh, yes. 
You may go now. Thank you. <laughs> and now, our neighbors, Mr. Costello is here, willing and ready to answer any vital questions pertaining to our grand and glorious city. Any questions at all? Yes, I have a question. How do you stand on the fiscal policy of this town? Are you in favor of issuing debentures, or would you coordinate the fiduciary interests and allow for normal amortization? Uh, Are there any other questions? Now, fellow voters, this I want to tell you something from the bottom of my heart. Standing up here on this platform, you really think I am nothing at all? If you elect me, you're electing the right man, the honest man. I love to do nice things for people of all walks and types in life. Because when you... Well, trouble in our miss. Uh, pardon me, little lady, what's wrong? Oh, I took my daddy's shoes to be repaired, and they lost them, and oh, if I well, go home with them... Please, them, please, come right say no more. Won't you come up here? That's what your counselor wants to do for all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, this poor little girl lost her daddy's shoes. And our councilman, our next councilman, will take care of that matter as he's taking care of all matters. Give the little lady your shoes. Give the little lady your shoes. Huh? Give the little lady your shoes. Votes. Votes. Oh, votes. I gotta ask, if I give you a pair of shoes, will you take them home to your daddy? Oh, yes. Well, there they are. Pick them up. There you are, my friend. Now, now, take now. Take those home to your daddy. Oh, and tell him you. to vote for Lou Costello for city councilman. Oh, my daddy will vote for Lou Costello. Thanks Thank you, little lady. lady. You see, there's one vote we've got, my friend. How do you like that? That's the kind of a councilman we want in office to help all. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I am standing here, as Abraham Lincoln said, four score and seven years ago, he was a barefoot boy, too, with no shoes on. And as he was walking through the woods, I'll never forget the first please, time please. that Abraham... A little lady in distress come right up on the rocks. A little lady... We're always here to help our neighbors. Got in. Now, just got one's on. wrong. Got in, got on. I was wearing my daddy's coat for Halloween, and somebody stole it. Stole your father's coat? And if I go home without it, my daddy will beat me. No, no, no. We can't allow that, can we, folks? No. no, certainly not. Give her your coat. Give her your coat. Give her your own coat. Yeah. You're not for Will you? Oh. I'm very sorry, folks. I was a little boisterous that time. I didn't mean to be. Give her your coat. Oh, nice. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come Here you are, little girl. Give it to your daddy. And tell your daddy to vote for Luke Costello. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I feel just are. like Abraham Lincoln. Oh, that's what I call oh, a real councilman, huh? I know it. Not too much. Four oh, score and seven years ago. Oh! Come on, get up. It's going to be a habit now. I don't mind being a good guy, but what's it all about? Now, just, uh, uh, now, just what is wrong with you, dear? Kids are coming from, but, but they're all shoes, ain't they? <laughs> give me your shirt and tie. You cannot just give it a tie. Give me your shirt and tie. Get the kisser on this one. <laughs> <laughs> and I have dogs cries the same way. <laughs> oh, don't you? Sure, I'm gonna vote. Give it to her. Here's my tie, little girl. And I'm gonna give him my shirt, too. And I want you to tell your daddy to vote for Lucas. Make sure that he votes for oh, Lucas Stella. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh -huh, on your way. All right, you can go this way. way. Hey, you better go anyway. Oh, hey, get now, the address friend. of that little girl. We'll get it later on. Now, friends. Now, friends, Abraham Lincoln felt exactly the same. Uh, she... <laughs> Come right up here. Come right This up. one looks like a banana. Oh, take it easy. What's the matter, little girl? I was ironing this morning and I burned a hole in my husband's trousers. <laughs> Celebrations. 
You lost the election. Well, that's good, ain't it? Who wants responsibilities? I don't want that stuff. <laughs> you lost, did you? Yeah. What, what have you got to say for yourself? Four score and seven years ago. Step right up. We'll get your weight within three pounds or it's for free. What do you say? Friend? If you have any weight on your mind, put it over here and take it off. Ah, uh, pardon me, friend. I'll get your weight within three pounds or it's absolutely free of charge. Now, just a minute, I feel your muscles, friend. Uh, let's see, I'll guess you to weigh about, uh, let's say, about 140 pounds. Hey, Abbott, you're I, wrong. Not 140 pounds. Oh, are you kidding? What? Oh, 140 pounds. What do you let's say? Let's see. I'd say 141. All right, it's 140 over there, sir. Sit right down, and that's it. Well, now, that's the time the house loses. How do you like that? We Wait missed it by 30 pounds. How can we miss it by 30 pounds? Well, suckers! Ooh. Oh, get the weight of that, Jack. Hey. Oh. If I had a weight. Come on. The next time someone comes up here, feel their bodies. You understand? Feel their muscles. They might have heads in their shoulders, you know what I mean? Nobody Feel their legs. Feel them all over. Oh. Now, don't forget that. I'm going to get a cup of coffee. Watch out how you weigh them. I'll feel them all over. Nobody's going to get the best of me. Step right up and let me guess your weight. I can guess anybody's weight. And you can guess my weight. <laughs> I can? Oh, that will be proud of me. I got, I got a customer. Already. Well, I say, lady, that you weigh uh, exactly... Um, you weigh exactly, let me see now. Uh, you got a, you got a, let me see it. I got a, I got a, I got a. I'm just talking about. Stand right there, lady. I gotta take a gander over here to figure out this whole situation. I say you, um. <laughs> you weigh exactly, um. Let me see now. Hmm. You have very light fingers. I'd say that you weigh 118. Sit right down over here, lady. Let's see what you weigh now. And this is for free on the house. Oh, you're so nice. How do you like that? I guessed it. 118 pounds you weigh. And on you, it looks nice. Oh, you're so cute. Even if you are chubby. Bye. <laughs> I guessed it right on the head. 118 pounds. <laughs> Hold it real still now, Dapper Dan. <laughs> Hold it now, Dan. <laughs> okay, Dan, we'll go and see the sergeant. That's all. This one place I don't want no part of. Let me guess you wait. It's for free, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. You think you're smart enough to guess my weight within three pounds? No, ma'am, I am not that smart. Ah, oh, come on, take a guess. You didn't. Go oh, ahead, yeah, take a guess. Hey, I'm a hand! Hey, I'm a hand! to guess her weight. Well, what's, uh, what's so hard about that? Are you kidding? Well, I'll guess the little lady's weight about, uh, I'll safely say about 200 pounds, round figures. <laughs> I don't think you went completely around. Oh, well, now leave it to the professor. Sit right down, madam. There we are. And the little lady weighs exactly. Oh, 